They say that experience is the best teacher, but I can argue that the YouTube comments section is also a mighty close second sometimes. After my last C++ video, I went down a bit of a rabbit hole trying out some optimizations suggested in the comments section for Pappy, my load testing tool. Some work beautifully, and some not so much. Again, take it easy on me since I'm still getting used to the realm of C++ optimizations. I gave a lot of the comments advice ago, and if I were to go through everything, I'd probably be here for days. So I picked a few that I'm gonna go over here, their outcomes, and what I learned. So either way, it's gonna be a ton of fun, so let's dive in. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. I'm pretty sure of all of the advice that I got in my last video, this is the single most spammed thing, and for good reason. This isn't really an optimization, but the dash O3 flag is essentially a compiler flag that tells the compiler, hey, above all, when you're compiling this program, optimize it for speed. Or in other terms, compiling in release mode. The reason behind why this compiles into a faster program is that the compiler applies aggressive optimizations in this mode, such as function inlining, loop unrolling and vectorization, dead code elimination, removing debugging information and checks, and a bunch of other stuff. This can increase compilation times and the size of the compiled object, but if the aim is speed, it's well worth it. There are some other compilation flags that are optimized for things like smaller file sizes or a balanced setup, but I want speed, so the dash 03 flag, it is for me. Now the cope answer as to why I never used it in the past is it would be way too easy to hit my performance goal in the last video with the dash 03 flag, so I didn't use it, but come on, we're friends here. Both of us know that I didn't know about it, so let's not pretend. Before this, with my test use case, it was running at about 17,000 requests per second. After the flag, let's just say it got a little faster. Anyways, I was so shocked as to how good this was that this was me when I first found out and used it. What the actual f <laughs> Jesus. Some of y'all recommended I try a different randomness engines since some are faster than others. I tested some of the ones that you guys suggested, primarily standard minstd rand, standard minstd rand 0, and the one that I was already using, MT19937. Based on some of the comments, I was under the impression that what I picked was the slowest randomness engine by far. The full name for MT19937 is Mersenne Twister 19937, so I'll use that to refer to it from now on. When I went to test MinSTD Rand, it had the same speed as the Mersenne Twister, which is confusing to me. The speed test of requests per second were within the margin of error I allowed myself, which was around 1-3%. to I dug into it a bit and found out that the way MinSTD Rand generates random numbers is with a relatively simple algorithm, but involves multiplying a state number against a large prime number, and then performing a modulo operator against it. Since CPUs sometimes run into trouble with multiplication and division of really, really large numbers, this algorithm is not always the best. On the other hand, the Mersenne Twister uses a bit of a more complicated algorithm, but achieves its randomness through a series of bitwise operations. To generate this data, an intricate series of shifts, ands, and XOR operations are performed. Now, CPUs are very, very, very fast at bitwise operations, so something like this ends up being as fast or faster in some cases compared to MinSDD RAND, where we perform a bunch of prime mul multiplications and modulos, which are quite expensive for a CPU. Since the randomness quality of the Mersenne Twister is generally a bit better than the MinSTD RAND, and seems to be as fast, I stuck with what I was already using. 
There were a few optimizations I did not intentionally do, but digging a bit deeper and becoming aware of what the program was doing behind the scenes helped a lot in terms of understanding. Many of my strings were relatively small since the majority of the strings that I would generate were around four to 12 characters long. This meant that they were valid for small string optimization. Small string optimization, or SSO, is a performance technique used by most modern C++ STD string implementations to avoid heap allocation for small strings. What this means is, instead of dynamically allocating memory for every string, the STD string class reserves a small buffer inside its own object to store small strings directly. This allows operations for small strings to happen without incurring the overhead of allocating heap memory. When a string fits within that internal buffer, typically around the max of 15 to 22 characters, depending on the platform implementation, it remains entirely on the stack, making it faster to manipulate and interact with. For example, creating a string variable that says hello won't trigger any heap activity at all. This drastically improves performance in applications that create many small strings like parsers, web servers, or Pappy. Return value optimization. When a C++ function returns an object by value, you might expect the compiler to create a temporary object, then copy or move it into the variable at the call site. This sounds simple, but it can be inefficient, especially if the object is large or manages expensive resources like memory or file handlers. Return value optimization, or RVO, is a compiler optimization that avoids this by constructing the return value directly in the memory space where it will ultimately live. In other words, instead of copying the result into place, the object is built there from the start. There are two main types of RVO. The first is called RVO, and it kicks in when returning a temporary object like return my class. The second is named RVO, which applies when returning a named local variable. In both cases, the compiler is allowed to skip calling the copy or move constructor altogether. This makes returning large structs or classes by value not just readable, but efficient. When it comes to the speed of computer operations, the order of fastest to slowest usually goes CPU cache, RAM, mass storage, and then the network is almost always the slowest. In the past, I was CPU bottlenecked, with most of the CPU time being taken up by things like the randomness engine, parsing network request bodies, and other stuff related to the actual logic of the project. One of the goals of this round of optimization was to see the majority of the CPU time on the flame graph being taken up by network related operations rather than any parsing or randomization functionality. This would mean that I would be bottlenecked by the network rather than CPU, which in this case would be a good thing since it would serve as an indicator that I sufficiently reduced the footprint of the other components of Pappy by quite a bit. This doesn't mean that I can't reduce the compute cost of my program's actual logic even further, but at least we're in the ballpark of where we should be. Another thing is not really an optimization, but removing all unnecessary data in a payload. When you're sending tens of thousands of requests per second, even a few unnecessary characters can have adverse effects on performance. It can be tempting to add in a ton of data into your JSON bodies, but that can end up doing more harm than good more often than not. Pure performance is important to me, but I also wanted a good amount of compatibility. That's why I went with JSON as the main output format of Pappy. If the goal was absolutely nothing but performance, then I most likely would have used protobufs. If you want to hear more about that, I go over that in a lot more detail in another video of mine I'll have linked. Since I started this project, it got picked up by a few places and used to test real world applications, which is mind blowing to me. The things I learned and the feedback that I got from not just a project, but a tool deployed in the real world 
is amazing. And if you'd like me to make a video on that, drop a comment. And that's everything. Take it easy, everyone, and stay safe.